Obviously, transformers are still the dominant architecture that most LLMs are built with, and we've seen really interesting things like Jamba that actually start to converge, picking the best parts of transformers, and architectures like Mamba, and then seeing how they can work together. But what's interesting is both of these have generally aimed to the massive, kind of most performance, biggest numbers on the board angle. And what I want to talk about today is a model that kind of does the opposite, but also focuses on a hybrid architecture roughly similar to Jamba. So the model I want to go over today is called Zamba 1.2b, and it comes from a really interesting startup called Zyfra, based in the Bay Area. And they basically state here that their entire point is to create state-of-the-art language models for on-device applications, which I think is pretty cool. And it's cool to finally see startups like this focus on something really narrow and then do it really well and actually deliver. So I want to get into more of this model and talk about why I think this is so cool. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. One interesting angle that Zypher takes is where they talk about the advantages of this model. We know that there are all kinds of tricks companies use to make their models look more performant or more generalized in comparison to what other companies have done. And generally, this is just trying to grok these benchmarks and get as close as you can to what their actual training sets are. But a really interesting metric that Zypher has used here for uh, Zypher 1.2b, which is really only supposed to be compared to other relatively small models like Phi 1.5, particularly Gemma 2b and Danube 1.7b, is what they call quality versus inference speed. Because when you're looking at mobile devices, you have to make choices about what you really want. And these compromises are important because it has massive impacts on user experience and what you can actually do on or off device. And it's cool to still see a slow but consistent trend of on-device compute still winning out against just dumping it all onto an API that happens on a server somewhere else. So this graph here shows that Zamba 2 1.2b is clearly in what they claim the best performance to speed ratio portion of this graph. And what's interesting here is, and on the y-axis we have the MMLU score, and on the x-axis, we have time to first token with an 8K input sequence length. And it's pretty cool to see that this is actually now pretty common on these small models. Now, let's get into kind of how this was actually built. So this was pre-trained on around 3 trillion tokens and annealed on around a 100 billion high quality token data set. The ways that these companies actually narrow down and make these models smaller, I think is pretty fascinating. For instance, we first got some really interesting insights into this with Llama 3, just seeing how Facebook actually managed to even quantize. And on models that are this small, um, that are capable, it's really interesting to see what happens when you start fine tuning them, because that's when they start to break, and really start to reveal some of the interesting methods that may have been used. What's cool is the model was released on a Hugging Face and standalone PyTorch. And right now, for the lack of a better term, it's basically the state of the art for really small models. So if you look at a few different evals outside of just MMLU, it's pretty clear that Zamba 1.2b is across the board more performant. And, you know, sometimes people will just pick a few different benchmarks. And it's cool to see that in this case, uh, Zamba 2 is truly basically at the top of the list across over seven different benchmarks. Now, the reason I picked this Twitter thread is this is actually by Quentin Anthony, who is one of the engineers who worked on Gemma. And it's pretty cool to see Google engineers who are very intelligent in their own right explain why other companies actually may have done something better. So what's interesting here is he said that Zamba 1.2 differs from Gemma 2.7b in three specific ways. We've added rotary position embeddings, a single shared transformer block instead of two that they alternate between, and added LoRa projectors to attention blocks instead of just LoRa on the MLP block. And you can think of these as just placing LoRa at a different step in the process of inference than uh, where it may have been in Gemma. And basically there are certain things that this architecture can do a little bit better uh, in parallel, as opposed to waiting for it to happen in sort of a chunked linear fashion. So according to Quentin, the reasons that Zamba 2 1.2b is performing so well is that, again, it's sharing the transformer blocks, which allows more parameters to be used in the Mamba 2 backbone. So there can just be a bit more going on in the background. In turn, this means that some attention makes up for SSMs having trouble with ICL and long range depths, which basically means if you're uh, reaching into any prior prompts or you're reaching into something that might not necessarily be within its capability. You have a slightly better idea of what might happen in that case. And then also this separate annealing training phase is actually over 100 billion parameters. So it was just bigger than Google thought would be necessary for one of their smallest Gemma models. So that was why it did so well in the benchmarks, but why does it do better in terms of performance? And the reason it does better in performance is 
A number of the reasons why Mamba at times is just a better option than a more conventional transformer based models. And a lot of this has to do with how mobile GPU compute is put together and just how mobile inference hardware is built, um, specifically like what you'd see in the new Snapdragon CPUs or in Apple Silicon. So Mamba 2 blocks have four times higher throughput than equal parameter transformer blocks. And this is directly related to its architecture. Mamba 2 also doesn't need a KV cache. So you only need to store KV states for attention invocations and nothing else. And the Zamba block sizing are chosen to be very parallelizable across GPU SMs or CPU cores. So you don't necessarily have to run this on a GPU. And again, parallelization is something that Mamba has always done better than transform based architecture when it comes to compute. And I'll have some really good resources in the description below that explain why this is and also explain why Jamba kind of differs from Mamba. And for me, Zyphra is so much more interesting than a number of the plethora of AI startups because they just picked one problem to do really well and they waited a while to show us their work. They weren't buying uh, exciting domains that have dumb names with half of the money given to them by investors. There weren't a lot of interesting kind of tricks that they did and they gave us something that is open source, provable, and that you can use today, which I think is really cool. And Quentin put it really elegantly here where he said, yeah, they're still democratizing these advanced AI systems, not putting them into a black box. They're exploring novel architectures on the frontier of, of on-device performance, not necessarily just piggybacking directly off of the, again, immensely powerful and impressive Transformers architecture, but the idea or just willing to question that we can do a little bit better and advancing the scientific study and understanding of these powerful models by still having somewhat of a science-based approach when creating these and being willing to talk about where they may have fallen short and other ways they're still trying to tackle some of the problems that uh, still present themselves as drawbacks to their Zamba architecture. And again, Quentin put it great here, uh, tiny powerful models built by tiny powerful teams are incredible. And also you should definitely keep following the Gemma team. Obviously Google is doing incredible work here as well. And it's cool to see engineers from both sides of sides that you wouldn't think would have a lot of uh, cross pollination, um, sharing their work, talking about it and collectively deciding that like the best way forward is keeping these things open and creating more advanced AI systems in the US. So I'll link their hugging face and uh, Zyphris page below. I think this is a really cool startup. I have an upcoming video uh, later this week that's covering another really small startup doing really cool things with uh, AI in space, which I think you guys will find pretty cool. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.